All right. Hello, everyone. Um, we have a, a small crowd with us today, but we're really grateful for those of you who are able to join us live for this second webinar. Um, as you all know, this is the second part of a two-part series of programs, which are really intended to provide a follow-up for you all after the risk evaluation workshop that we all did together at the ATOM meeting in October. Uh, we wanted to structure these programs as a way to provide um, other opportunities to check in, see how you're doing as you brought uh, your resources back to your home institution. So in the program that we ran last month, we talked about using the risk evaluation tools and uh, seeing where you all were in terms of meeting with potential partners. And today's program is really intended to check in to see how you're doing on the process of actually writing a plan. And we wanted to go over um, some of the templates that we talked about back in October and see uh, how you all were doing in applying those skills as well. So just a couple of quick reminders about the technical aspects of this webinar platform. Um, if you haven't found it yet, there's a chat box window on the left-hand side of your screen. So please use that to say hello as you log in and uh, be sure to share any questions or comments that you have uh, using that chat window. And um, we're recording the program, so um, you can go back and view the recording when we upload it to our YouTube channel after the fact as well. And then just a reminder that um, Rebecca is going to be scheduling calls with you all in January to just check in one-on-one -on -one and, and see how you're doing with your planning process, um, see how your plans have come together, and then um, just check in and make sure that these resources are as useful as possible. So. Without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Rebecca Elder, who is just going to... Uh... Hi, everybody. It is nice to see you all, especially this close to a winter break for most people. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive right into it. Um, today, we want to talk just for a couple of minutes about choosing your template, how you're coming on writing your plan, and creating your salvage priorities. And we are going to wind up with some next steps. I apologize if I sneeze in your ears today. Austin's allergy counts are pretty much off the chart, and I am not quite dying of them, but the next thing to it. So I will do my best to mute myself. But if you hear me go quiet for a few seconds, that's what it is. Yep, Jess says that the cedar is brutal. It is the worst thing in the world. And it usually doesn't start until mid-January. Mid so we're a month ahead of the curve, which is not promising. So um, templates. We talked when we were together in October that you did about how you didn't have to reinvent the wheel you when you were creating your disaster plan. Instead, you could choose a template and work from that to help format and structure your planning. And choosing the right one for you would set you up for successful completion. The options we looked at in class were the Council of State Archivist Pocket Response Plan, and that was the quick little one-pager. We also looked at the California Preservation Template, which is a little more involved, but still not overly. And we talked about D plan, which is the most involved option out there. So have you all chosen a plan yet? Or have you thought about which one you're going to choose? If you have some thoughts, yep, I see Tisa typing. That's awesome. And Mike. Mike's working on a pocket planner. That is perfect. I love the pocket response plan. The more I work with it, the more I like it. Tisa is 
is still typing. Jess is typing. Oh, you have a pocket response plan for the AIC office. That's awesome. I didn't know that. You all are going with D-Plan. Tisa's group is. Um, that's fantastic. I am really excited to hear that. And I'll be excited to hear about your results. Um, the other thing you will probably be interested to know is that D-Plan is being updated for 2019. Um, I don't know when the updated version is going to be released, but they are promising it sometime in 2019. And one of the things they are going to add for that is a pocket response plan component. So you get the full book, but you also get the quick pocket response plan to go with it if you want that. Um, Mike, we don't have it set up so that you can talk. We only have it set up so that people can type. So know your volume isn't working on your end. Are you having a hard time hearing us? I'm going to let Jess go ahead and work on troubleshooting that. Is there anything anyone else wants to say or ask about templates? Hopefully that's a pretty easy decision to make. Pieces typing. Tisa is interested in steps for extensive salvage for earthquakes and for flooding. Um, in terms of salvage, I would be looking at, so D-Plan will give you a lot of that information. I also would look for the WAC salvage chart, salvage at a glance chart, which will have a ton of that information. Um, it's, and oh, and then the other thing, if you want to invest, and I'm sure Jess will be able to tell me exactly what the price is, but the FAIC's um, field guide to emergency response is also an excellent reference. And also AIC's YouTube channel has videos that go with the field guide that demonstrate salvage. Um, it's not so much that you're going to have steps for earthquakes. You'll have steps for what happens when the collection gets water damaged. 
um, because water damage could be any kind of a disaster. Um, hopefully with earthquakes, you'll mostly have things that are knocked off of shelves that you can pick up. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, the field guide is a fantastic little resource. I'm a huge Rebecca, fan of I'll it. I'll just jump in and say that um, the field guide is normally $25, but for those in this class, I think we can get the bulk discount of $20. Um, so if people can email, let me know if you're interested in that. But um, yeah, the salvage at a glance um, resource is really great as well. Um, Betty Walsh. Nice. And to answer Mike's question, oh, well, actually, I can't answer it verbally because he can't hear. I'll type. Yeah. It, it's got every kind of material you could imagine finding in a collection. And I think while you do that, I'm going to move to the next slide, which is on writing the plan. And when we talked about writing the plan, we talked about Oh, Tisa says they have a high risk of fire smoke from forest fires. The seasons are winter, spring, summer, smoke, and fall. Ah. <sighs> yep, I sympathize. And, and I think that one of the things that will help you with smoke, if you get smoke on things, is using soot sponges to move smoke debris. Um, so, we talked about mapping the facility. We talked about things like figuring out your exit routes and where all of your fire equipment is, your salvage equipment is, potentially your salvage priorities. We talked about procedures, which is what you're going to do if you have a disaster. Um, are you going to grab things? What are you going to do to get people out of the building? What are you going to do once you can get back in? And then for attachments, we talked about adding copies of things like your salvage priorities, um, copies of your insurance policy, copies of your disaster recovery contract. Um, locations of important information. So has anyone gotten to that stage yet? Is there anything you want to comment about? Anything you have questions on? I see that Tisa is typing. And I think Tisa with D plan, a lot of the attachments will just be set out for you. And D plan should create your procedures. Which is pretty great.
We just whenever I see someone who's typing, I'm reluctant to move on because I want to make sure that we get any questions answered. Oh, here we go. So Tisa says she's lucky enough to contract with ProServe Emergency Response. So you need to do more research on the salvage steps and working with other response organizations. Yeah, and I would want to, if I were doing that, I would want to make sure that they understand what kinds of materials you have, what kinds of collections you have, because museum and library collections want to be handled differently than just kind of generic office collections. So it might not be a bad idea to have a sit down with them, invite their technical staff over to visit your museum, show them the kinds of materials you have, and ask them how they are going to take care of them if there's any kind of damage, so that you're all on the same page. But I'm really glad that you have a contract with an emergency response company. Looks like oh, Jess is typing. Oh, and we have a tip sheet, Tisa, on working with emergency recovery companies that Jess is going to get a link for, and she'll put it into the chat because um, it's something we put together during Hurricane Harvey. But we think it's pretty useful for like a one pager. So on to salvage priorities. And during our October workshop, we talked about how you would determine your salvage priorities and that it can sometimes be difficult. So I wanted to know how you approach that challenge. Have you started thinking about your salvage priorities? Has it fallen into place? Has there been any politics? Or have you not gotten that far yet? So the Graton Rancheria has not gotten that far yet. Tisa, it feels like your group is really um, plugging away on this. It's very exciting. And was that process difficult, or did it go easily? And Mike Wilson is typing. Mike says they have lots of copies from the National Archives, which are the low priority. Absolutely. If it's somewhere else, it is your zero. It is not worth wasting time on in a big disaster. And oral histories are always priority one. I really like that. That's something that's difficult to or impossible to replace, actually. Um, I would also say that if you have that backed up off-site, that might make it easier to, to not have to worry about oral histories. If you can take the tapes and digitize them and store the digital copies in the cloud, that might be worth doing. And Tisa is typing. So T 
Tisa says, no, it's easy. They're a state agency, so you have to have some general priorities set. But it's very general priorities for each collection. That makes sense. And, and that should make it fairly non-difficult to figure out. So I'm happy to hear that. And Jess says the AIC website isn't loading, but she'll share the tip sheet later. So look for that to be coming. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to say about salvage priorities? When there's only four people, things go really quickly. Well, all righty then. I think, yeah, we're about ready to wrap up. So the week of January 21st, we'll be scheduling follow-up calls. So in early January, look for that sign up. If you have a copy of your plan, if you can submit it by January 14th, that would be useful because I can then review it before we talk on the phone and have any thoughts or tweaks that I would make. Um, calls are going to be about 15 minutes. Mike says, not a problem, just has to, have to figure out the utility contacts. If that's your biggest issue, then you are in excellent position with this. Um, so it should be low-key, just a chance to talk about how implementing the plan is going, anything that I see that is an easy change to make. Tina says, or Tisa says, OK. Mike got a new cabinet. That's exciting. What is the cabinet for? It's been a while since October, so I don't remember everything we talked about in the workshop. Oh, repatriated items. That's awesome. Congratulations. With locks, and that's that that's <laughs> so fancy. I'm really, really, really happy for you all. That's great. And wheels, so you just ah, uh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. It will make your life so much easier. I am delighted to hear that. Rebecca, yeah, I was just going to jump in and say, um, uh, you know, we have typing? a small group on the Tisa's program Tisa's jealous. Today, but, um, you know, I'm jealous we'll too, and I don't even have repatriated share, items to store. I just have workshop, then, like um, cat food and yarn, really. Online community as well. I think it's really helpful to hear these kinds of updates. And then emergency and, um, lights in your office. You know, Mike has some words of wisdom to share about. Um, you know, the process of getting those cats <laughs> and, and tips for others. It's Mike has yarn storage, too. Learn. Excellent. To I will feel right at home. Community to learn from um, so I think it's were you awesome going to say something, to Jens? Have these examples. Um, before we wrap things up, uh, I just wanted to make sure I had brought over the link, just so if you all have any feedback about this program or any other input about um, this webinar or the one before or the, the workshop itself, just wanted to give you all another outlet for sharing that feedback. And then, Rebecca, I'll turn things over to you to wrap up. I agree. <laughs>